The experiments. To prove what he has said, he then asks the reader to gather various magnets and welding rods and wire, so you can make homemade magnets and compasses, as quoted from his text. When you are making a magnet, use U-shaped magnet, South Pole magnet to make North Pole magnet in the rod, and use U-shaped North Pole magnet to make South Pole magnet in rod. You can drag the magnet from end to end, but never stop in the middle. If you stop in the middle, there will be an extra pole, so it will disturb the magnet's circulation. To take the magnet out from rod ends, approach or touch the end with the same kind of magnet that is in the rod end with the same kind of magnet that is in the rod, and use filings to see how it works. We will try to replicate what Ed did exactly, but will substitute materials or procedures if necessary. What Ed is asking you to do is take a magnet and touch each end of the rod to induce a magnetic pole in each end of the rod by induction. Using the north pole of the magnet to induce the opposite pole in the rod, and the south pole of the magnet to induce the opposite pole in the other end of the rod. He also states you can swipe the rod from end to end without stopping or a third pole will be in induced at the point where you hesitate or stop on the rod and that will disturb the flow of magnetic circulation. To change the ends of the rod you can touch each end of the rod with a like pole or same pole to reverse its polarity. Ed goes further in his text to say, break three pieces of steel fishing line just long enough to fit between the poles of the U-shaped magnet and place them in between the poles. Hang one in a fine thread by its middle and place it in the east side of the room where no other steel or magnets is near it. Now you will have a magnet or compass to test the polarity of other magnets to test the strength of magnets use filings. You can use three paper clips if they retain their polarity and single touch each side of the ends with a magnet or swipe the paper clips with a pole of a magnet and hang them in a thread or use a compass and make sure no other steel or magnet is too close or it will skew your measurements. You can use BBs to test the strength of the magnets. Next he shows how magnets can be sent in straight streams and whatever kind of magnets you are sending out, the opposite are coming back at you. Take a magnet and a compass and hold the magnet on the same level near the compass. Now move the magnet above the level with the compass and you'll see the pointer move towards the magnet. This is showing the magnetic field is coming in straight streams. And because opposite poles attract, you know whatever pole the compass is pointing to when facing the magnet the opposite pole is on the compass. He goes on to say put the U-shaped magnet two feet west from the hanging magnet. Hold the north pole magnet in level with the hanging magnet. Then you will see that the south pole of the hanging magnet is turning to you and the north pole magnet away from you. The inverse occurs if you hold the south pole of the magnet level with the hanging magnet. He goes on to say this experiment shows two things. One, that the magnets can be sent out in straight streams. Two, whatever kind of magnet you are sending out, the other kind is coming back at you. He is basically saying magnetic flux can be finely focused. The magnetic particles that are being sent are attracting the opposite particles coming at it. Ed is making compasses, and you can use inexpensive compasses instead. But learning about magnetic induction and being able to make your own geometry of magnets is critical to understanding why Ed came to the conclusions he arrived at. 
Ed shows magnetic streams moving in straight lines and repulsion. If you look at a conventional example, it shows repulsion at the north and attraction at the south, which is an inadequate explanation of repulsion at the south or attraction at the north. Ed's explanation covers both attraction and repulsion happening simultaneously on both poles. This video should show how Ed saw two actions or forces happening simultaneously. Ed uses stiff wire hung from thread, but this should show basically the same effect. As you have seen, you can use simple examples to show the same effect that Ed saw without having to build exact replicas of Ed's work. To summarize, one, he said using the touch method, you can make metal wire into a permanent magnet for use as a compass. Two, you can also use the single swipe method from end to end to make a welding rod into a permanent magnet. Three, he cautions against using the double swipe method to magnetize metal into a permanent magnet. Four, he describes how the streams of magnetism can be steered. Five, he shows how two forces are happening simultaneously on both poles. More experiments will continue in episode 3. Magnetic induction is vital to understanding Ed's concepts, so we will take a moment to explain some interesting points about magnetic induction. We will use regular magnets, an ordinary non-magnetic BB, and some silicone steel transformer core material. You can see that the large magnet attracts the steel BB, but when the BB is removed from the induced magnetic field, it is not magnetic. You can also observe the steel, the silicone steel is attracted to the magnet, and when it is removed from the magnetic field, it is also not magnetic. When the BB is stuck to the pole of the magnet, when you approach the magnet with a piece of steel, the BB jumps to the smaller piece of silicone steel. And while it's in the induced magnetic field, it can be moved away twice as far from the magnet than the BB can normally be attracted to the magnet. The BB is attracted to the magnet at 2 inches but is carried by the steel core up to 4 inches or more extending the attractive force of the magnetic field by becoming an extended magnet by induction. 
The neutral zone can also easily be shown with the induction method. As you can see, the BB falls off when approached by the neutral zone. Because of the geometry of the magnet, you can only attract steel to the magnet. When using a different geometry shape of magnetic fields with a proper induced magnetic field, you can attract, then neutralize, then repel the steel, which is desirable. Conventional motors do not do this. They work against themselves, which makes them inefficient and not perpetual. More on this later.